Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you guys hear me out there? If you guys give, hear me out there, give a thumbs up, give a shout, give a scream, give a yell, give a hoo whatever you want to do. Let me know. Amen. Praise God. We want to thank you this evening for joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I had to turn my fan off because last time somebody said my fan was loud, but nevertheless, I'm here. But um, you guys can hear me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to thank you guys for uh, for coming out, participating, um, and to hear the message. Amen. And uh, how many know that? Feeding our spirit is, is good. We can't uh, we can't live without the Word of God. Amen. And um, before we get started, I just want to go ahead and uh, give a couple of announcements. And one is our pantry from Wednesday through Friday from 8 to 11 at 990 South Capitol Avenue. If you, if you need food, you're in need of food, anybody else that you know is in need of food, bring them down to, uh, to our church. Again, the address is 990 South Capitol Avenue, and uh, just drive through. Drive through, and they load you up. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I'm impressed by the amount of people that we've been feeding, the numbers that we got. Last last month, I think, was somewhere over 5,000 people that have come through our church, and, and we feed them. We give them groceries, amen. And uh, So if you know of anybody, you know, don't don't let anything uh, overtake you. Don't let pride take over. If, if you need it, come through with Sarah. It's available. There's more than enough for everybody. Amen. Come through and um, and uh, get your box of food. Amen. Get your groceries. Amen. And the next one is uh, to continue to be faithful with your giving. Amen. To continue to be faithful with your giving to the church. Amen. Um, I know some. I'm one of those that I work strictly on commission. And uh, so we don't get paid every week. You know, we get paid when our loans close. And it's been a hectic couple of months. But nevertheless... God has provided, and uh, but just continue to be faithful and stand on the Word of God and, and trust the Lord for all things. Amen. Uh, if you give, if you give from your heart, God will reward you. Amen. And we pray that for those that they can't give, that God would bless them so that they're able to give at another time. Amen. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with the Word. I'm just going to go ahead and open with the Word of Prayer this evening. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and just come in agreement as we just extend forth our hands. Father, we just come before you tonight. As we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, just to be here and partake of your word, Father God. We ask for your covering upon us, Father God. I ask that every heart, every mind be open to receive, Father God. Every ear be open to receive, Father, your word that you have for us tonight, Father God. I pray that I would decrease, God, as John 3.30 says, that you must increase, God. That you would set me aside, Lord God, and that you would move in the way that you want to move, Lord. And the word would go forth the way you have given it to me, Father. We thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me get a drink. Uh, just really quick commercial. Um, there's nobody else living in this house but me now, and I got to lock my dog right there, Capone. He's a good dog, but sometimes he just wants to get a little excited and come over and knock the camera over, so I had to put him on the other side. If you hear him bark a little bit or growl, it's just Capone because he wants attention. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to start with the word tonight, amen. I got a word that the Lord has given me, and the word is a man after God's heart, amen. There's a man that the Lord called him a man after his own heart. Because this man longed and pursued justice and mercy for God's people. He longed to do works that were pleasing to God, even when his life was at risk. He showed many times that he loved and desired truth and integrity more than his own life. Amen. This was a man that, that, that was labeled and called a man after God's own heart. And he was a man that, that struggled in the same sense as some people struggle today. Amen. Um, one thing that I want to reassure you with is that God doesn't look for perfection. Amen. And as we go through this message, you're going to see and you're going to understand it's a challenging message. It's challenging the church. It's challenging the body to rise up. Amen. Because so many times we make excuses about our life. So many times we make excuses about going forward. So many times we make excuses about not doing God's work. Amen. We, uh, we say, well, I'm not worthy. You are worthy. I'm not fit. You are fit. I'm not equipped. 
you're more than equipped. Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit and your dependency was on, it's upon the Holy Spirit and not yourself. Amen? So this evening as we go forward in the message, I want you to have the ears open, amen, your mind open to receive what God has. Because a lot of times the excuses that we make prevent us from getting to where we need to go. Prevent us from doing God's will, amen. Because we think that we have to be perfect individuals. And I want to share with you tonight. I want to share with you tonight what God's word says. Amen. Like I said, there was a man that the Lord called him a man after his own heart. Amen. Because this man longed to pursue justice and mercy for God's people. He longed to do works that were pleasing to God even when his life was at risk. Amen. He showed many times that he loved and desired truth and integrity more than his own life. Amen. I, I want to be a man after God's own heart. Amen. But how? You may think and you may say that, you know what, Pastor John, I want to be a man after God's own heart. But how? How does a person do that? Amen? Do you have to constantly read your Bible and pray without ceasing? If so, then some will never attain that mark. Amen? Some are just too busy with work and family to be able to, to read their Bible constantly. And pray without ceasing. Some would like to say they can. But they know they can't. Amen. Just the hustle and bustle of life and work. And everything that goes on. You don't have the opportunity. Some don't have the opportunity. To be able to read their Bible. And pray all the time the way they want to. But you know what? It's up to you and I to make that time. Amen. Amen. But is that what it means to. To be a man after God's own heart. Is that we got to be people that, that continue to pray without ceasing. To continue to read our word, amen? Is that what makes us a man after God's own heart? Amen? I'm blessed to have the job that I have. I, I, I make my own hours, amen? I, I wait till traffic dies down. If I don't have to go to the office, I don't go. But I make a guest appearance. I usually get there about 10, 30, or 11. I'm gone by 3, 30. I, I go in there and handle my business, and I come home, amen? But I'm blessed to be able to get up and spend, spend that time with God, amen? And, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm not boasting within myself, but... My prayer time is about an hour, an hour and a half, just, man, in the presence of God, amen? And we have to be people that we have to make that time, amen? Uh, the gyms are back open, praise God, I'm back at the gym. So now I got to get up a next little extra earlier now to be able to pray before I was going to the gym and coming home and pray. But now I want my prayer to start before I go to the gym, amen? So I've got to get up a little bit earlier now and, and seek the Lord for about an hour and then hit the gym, amen? But praise God. But does, is that what it takes? Is that what it takes for somebody to be a man after God's own heart? Is that we've got to spend all this time, amen? Why did, I mean, who did God call a man after his own heart? Let's take a look. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 13 and 14, amen? 1 Samuel 13, verses 13 through 14. Samuel said to Saul, You have acted foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Verse 14. He says, but now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people because you have not kept, the Lord, kept what the Lord commanded you to. Amen. In the Hebrew, the word heart is pronounced lebab, le lebab, amen? It means the inner man, the mind, the will of an individual, the heart of an individual, the soul of an individual, the understanding, the inner part of a person, amen? That's what heart means. It means the inner man. It means the mind and the will, amen? So here was Saul... He didn't obey the Lord. And Samuel said that the Lord has appointed him a ruler over his people because he was a man after his own heart. He was a man after God's heart. Amen. Of course, we know that Samuel was speaking about David. We all know the story about David being a man after God's own heart. Amen. So David was a man after God's own heart. Did David sit around reading the scriptures all day? Amen. Did he sit around meditating and praying all day? No. No, 
David had work just like you and I. David was busy just like you and I. Amen. He had things to tend to just like you and I. We got to go to work. We got to put a roof over our head. We got to put food on our table. We got to pay our bills. Amen. Uh, right now, there's no activities after extracurricular activities where people were going to sporting events, practices, or whatever it may be. Amen. We don't have those things right now. Amen. Now would be a time for you to spend more time with God. Amen. To really press in and seek the Lord. Amen. But David was a man like you and I, busy. Amen. He had things to do. He was a ruler. He had things to oversee. He saw people that he had to oversee. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us quite a lot about David. He was a shepherd. He was a mighty warrior. Amen. He was a musician. And to his downfall, he was a ladies man. Amen. That is not to say that he did not read the scriptures and meditate on God's word. Or that he did not pray. But he was not locked in a room doing all those, all those things. Amen. So we come back to that question again. What made David a man after God's own heart? Amen. What made him that? What, wait, what, why did he get that label from God himself that he was a man after my heart? Amen. What made him a man after God's own heart? He had these issues. He was a musician. He struggled like you and I. Amen. We know a few things. Let's take a look. He had many wives. We know that he was also, that he was not also the best disciplinarian of his kids. Amen. And we take the story of Tamar, for example. David knew that, that she had been raped by her half-brother, but he did nothing. Amen. The incident snowballed and almost cost David his life and his kingdom because Tamar's brother, her natural brother, wanted to avenge her. Amen. So he wasn't a great disciplinary individual. Amen. We know that David committed adultery with Bathsheba and then to cover it up, ordered her husband's murder. This is David. This is who God says was a man after his own heart. Amen. So can you stop and take a moment and see that David wasn't a perfect individual. David didn't spend all his time praying and reading and meditating on the Word of God. David, in fact, was an individual like you and I. He stumbled, amen? He fell short like you and I, amen? He, uh, he committed sin like you and I, amen? We're not perfect. And God's not looking for perfect individuals, amen? He's not looking for perfect because neither one of you are perfect. Amen. Neither one of you can walk on water. Neither can I. We can't walk on water. We are not perfect individuals. Amen. But well, we have to understand though that the mercy and grace of God is new every day. It's new every day. And I tell people like this. Don't bring the mistakes of your yesterdays into your today. Because it will rob you of your joy and your happiness. Amen. Whatever is behind. Whatever happened yesterday. Paul says leave it behind. Forget about what lies behind us. Amen. But we have to understand that David was not a man who never sinned or never made a mistake. You and I fall short. The word of God says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You and I make mistakes. I make mistakes. Amen. I make mistakes. Yet God still called him a man after his own heart. So what could be this reason, amen? What could be the reason? Let's take a look. 1 Samuel 21, 12 through 13. 1 Samuel 21, 12 through 13. The word says, David took these words to heart and greatly feared Achish, king of Goth. So he disguised his sanity before them and acted insanely in their hands and scribbled on the door of the gate and let his saliva run down into his beard. Amen. Did you catch that? David took the words of heart and greatly feared this king. But look what the Bible says. So he disguised his sanity. He made himself look like he was insane before them. And he acted insanely, the word of God says, and in their hands and, and he scribbled. On the doors of the gate, and he let his saliva, like a madman, he let his saliva run down his beard. Amen? Amen? So although he had faith in God and trusted God, he was much like us, 
There were times when he lacked faith, church. There was times that because he was afraid of his king that, that he lacked faith and trust in God. Amen. Just like you and I. Sometimes we lack faith. Sometimes we lack trust in God. See, David was human like you and I. Amen. He wasn't up above on a pedestal. He was right here with you and I. And he understood. He made mistakes. He fell short many times, just like you and I. You know, I shared with somebody the other day, and uh, they had posted, I'm not going to give out a name, but they know who they are if they're watching, but they had posted about a job, that they got a job. And uh, I told them, I says, you know, they, they, I told them, I says, you got to understand, you're worthy. You're worthy in the eyes of God, amen. You're worthy to God. You're the apple of God's eye. Regardless of your mistakes, regardless of what you've done or who you are, you are worthy, amen. You are worthy of the mercy and the grace of God, and you are the apple of God's eye. As long as you're serving the Lord and you're striving every day to serve God, amen, and just be obedient and be who you can be in Christ, and you're continually growing in the things of God, amen, you are worthy of the love of God. And she, she, spoke, she told me, she says, you know what, man? She goes, sometimes I have a problem. Handling God's love. Amen. And sometimes the enemy condemns you and I because we make mistakes. Because we fall short. And he tries to tell you that you're not worthy. He tries to tell you that you can't do it. Amen. But we got to understand that Philippians 4.13 says that I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. There's nothing that we can't do through Christ. Amen. As long as it's through Christ, we could do it. Amen. But the enemy will try to come and oppress you. Try to subdue you and hold you down and tell you that you're unworthy. Amen? That you can't do it. David was like you and I. Amen? If David was not a man after God's own heart, David was not a man after God's own heart because he was constantly in prayer and meditation, and not because he lived such a holy life, and not because of the unshakable faith, what was it? Amen? What was it? David was not a man after God's own heart because he, constantly, he was constantly in prayer and meditation. He didn't do it all the time. Not because he lived such a holy life. The scriptures tell us otherwise. Amen? And not because of his unshakable faith. What was it? Why did God tell him, label him, and call him a man after his own heart? Amen? I know that there are several reasons David was a man after God's own heart. Because some of them are plainly stated in Scripture and some are implied. And let's look at one of those implied reasons. Amen? First, after David committed adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband killed to cover up his sin, God sent Nathan to confront him with his own sin. And I'm going to read the story right here. 1 Samuel chapter 12, 1 through 13. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the one poor, and the other poor. The rich man had a great many flocks and herds, amen? But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe, lamb, amen? Which he had bought and nourished. And they grew up together with him and his children. It would eat of his bread and drink of his cup and lie in his bosom and was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler had come to the rich man and he was unwilling to take from his own flock or his own herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. Rather, he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Amen. Then David's anger burned, the word of God says. Then David's anger burned, amen, greatly against the man and said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, surely the man who has done this, he deserves to die. He must make restitution for the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and had no compassion. Nathan then said to David, You are that man, David. Thus says the Lord of God of Israel, It is I who anointed you king over Israel, and it is I who delivered you from the hand of Saul. And I also gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your care. And I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, and it had not been there been too little. I would have added to you many more things like these. 
Why have you despised? Amen. He says, why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. Verse 10. Now therefore, he says, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you from your own household. And I will even take your wives before your eyes and give them to your companions. And he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. Amen. Verse 12 says that, Indeed, you secretly did a secret, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and under the sun. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And he said to Nathan, The Lord has taken away your sin. You shall not die. Amen. He had a repentant heart. Amen. He confessed and repented before the Lord, and because he confessed and repented, the word says that your sin has been taken away. You will not die. Amen. This was an implied version of David being a man after God's own heart. Because David could have said, well, Bathsheba, Bathsheba should not have been bathing out in this open. Or he could have blamed the servants who went to get her for him. There are thousands of things David could have pointed out, but he did it. He confessed his sin with a contrite heart. Amen? See, sometimes we do things and we make excuses. Amen? Rather than just confessing and repenting, we make excuses for why we did. Amen? But when we realize that if we confess, the Word of God says in 1 John 1, chapter and verse 9, says that He is just to forgive us, amen? And that if we repent, that our sins are washed away, amen? See, David could have made excuses, but he, he confessed and he repented before God, amen? And this was one of the reasons why God said that he was a man after God's own heart. So you've got to understand, it's not by how many hours you spend in prayer, it's not by how many amens or hallelujahs you can say. It's not by how good you can look on the outside. It's not by how good you smell, amen. It's not by how good you, you spend reading your word, how many hours you spend reading your word. It's your actions. It's your actions. Amen. It's your actions. What you do and what you don't do. Amen. What you do and what you don't do. If you fall short, I tell people like this, listen to me. That if you fall short, this is us right here, my hands together, this is us with God. If we fall short and we don't confess, we move a little bit away from God. If we do it again and fall short on something else and we don't confess, we move another little bit away from God. And we keep doing it and we don't repent, we move it, we move, we move, we move, we move. See, God is still right here, but you see where we're at now? We're away from God. But the minute that you confess and repent, boom, you're right back here all over again. So you fall short again, you distance yourself unless you confess and repent. And I tell people, the minute you do it, you got to recognize, man. You got to recognize, amen. Because you don't want to be distant from God. Amen. Now, it's very popular today to blame our sinful ways on the past. Amen. But you don't know what I went through back there. You don't know how I grew up. Amen. And I was thinking about that today. I was meditating on that today. I came home and, uh, um, you know, we're fasting. We fast on Wednesdays from 6 to 6. Well, you know, this week I'm just doing a whole week fast. And I came home and I and I prayed. I got home at about 3.30 and I got into prayer. And I began to meditate. I was just praying and I was thanking God because I could easily make excuses for my past. Amen. God was showing me things. He was showing me things, amen, and, and I was like, man, God, you know what, I thank you, man, that I'm able to, to come before you, amen, and, and acknowledge, man, because we can, hold, we can say, look, you don't, you don't know what I went through back there when I was a little kid. You don't know. You don't know how I was treated, amen. I remember just growing up. I was a black sheep of the family. I was, man, and my family is just like, man, I was always in trouble, always uh, being punished, always, you know, I, and I could have blamed that. I could have blamed that, everything on my past, amen, just said. But I did it. When I came to the Lord, man, I forgave everything. Amen. I let everything go and I said, I got to move forward. But today God was showing me some things. Things that I didn't know I had inside of me. Amen. And I asked God to remove it. Amen. But we could easily blame our past. 
or it's the fault of our past hardships or our parents or our employer or the lies we were told by Satan when we were young, amen? You name it, people have used it to shift the blame from their own actions to others. The only thing this does is deny our responsibility before a holy God, amen? We are responsible. We have to be responsible. It doesn't matter because everybody has a story. Everybody has a testimony, amen? Everybody has a past or they've gone through some things, amen? But we can't keep holding on to that because it stops you and I from going where God wants us to go. It stops you and I from having that fellowship with Christ, amen? Because there's some things inside of us that got to be removed. Some things that got to go deep within the crevices of your heart and be pulled out by the root, amen? So we can easily make excuses, but we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to, amen? But it's, it's popular today. People blame. People blame things. They, they, they put the blame. They put the blame on people, amen? But we are responsible for ourselves. This walk is between me and God, between you and God, not me and you, between me and God, amen? So we are responsible, we are obligated to God, amen? And uh, we can't go around blaming people, we can't go around blaming excuses. David did it here, David confessed and he repented and his sin was removed. The word says that he will not die, amen? Amen? Now, for a stated explanation from Scripture for the reasons David was a man after God's own heart, let's take a look at Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts 13, verse 22. And after he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will, listen to what it says, who will do all my will. Amen? Who will do all my will, he says. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will. Amen? That he will do what God requires of him, that God would ask of him, that he wouldn't make excuses. That God called him to do a mission, a commission, and he would go and do it. Amen? He didn't make excuses. He didn't say, I'm not equipped for it. I'm not adequate for it. But you don't understand. I can't reach those type of people. Did you know that Jesus is the Son of God, came to the earth, never sinned, but was able to reach the sinners? See, what happens is we look at our own dependency, and we say, you know what, I can't reach those type of people. Amen? But see, David was a man after God's own heart because the word of God says that I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will. Amen? Who will do all my will. Doing what God required of him and what God asked of him made him a man after God's own heart. No matter what the circumstances were, no matter what it looked like, amen, David went forth to do what God required of him to do. And thus, it made David a man after God's own heart, amen. You and I have to be people that are ready to do the will of God, that we're going to step into that realm and do God's work, amen, no matter what, amen. David could have said, well, I'm a king. I don't need to do that. Send somebody else. Amen. I'm a shepherd. I don't know. Send somebody else. Send a laborer to go do that. Amen. David wanted to be in the trenches. You and I got to want to be in the trenches. Amen. You and I got to want to be in the trenches. Amen. He said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do my will. So sometimes God requires things of you to do it, and you make excuses not to do it, and all you're doing is not hindering God, because God will find somebody else hindering yourself, amen? Hindering yourself. I tell you, God puts you and I in positions and places, and it's up to us to maintain it. It's up to you and I to keep that place in that position, because just like Saul right here, you'll be removed from it, Amen? And he'll go find somebody else. Look at what he did. He anointed Saul as king. He was disobedient. He removed him. And he anointed David and put him as king. Amen. And it's up to you and I to be ready and willing to do the will of God. Amen. Not to keep saying hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, glory to God. That does nothing. That does nothing for you and I. It's ready to do God's will. Ready to move forward, amen. In the Greek, 
hardest pronounced cardia. The center and the seat of a spiritual life, the soul or mind, and it is the fountain and seat of the thoughts, the passions, the desires, the appetites, the affections, the purposes, the endeavors, the understanding. Amen? The faculty and the seat of the intelligence of the will and the character of an individual. Amen? That's what the word heart means in the Greek. Your spiritual life, the soul of a man, the inside. Amen? The thoughts, the passions, the desires, the appetites, the affections, the purposes, the endeavors. Amen? That's. So if David is a man's after God's heart, what is God's heart? Amen? If David is a man after God's heart, a little water. What is God's heart? He will do everything I will want him to do. Wow. How simple is that? Amen? A person after God's heart is, is that he will do everything that God wants him to do. Amen? Remember I preached, um, I think on the 13th, a couple, a couple Sundays ago. And I was talking about that God wants to take you to a next level. And when he wants to take you to the next level, as Abraham was going to go up the hill to sacrifice Isaac, he left his two servants behind. And they, they didn't go. He left them behind because they weren't ready to go to that next level with them. Amen? Because if he would have taken them up, they would have probably tried to stop Abraham from going to sacrifice Isaac. Amen? But we know that God had it in control. But Abraham left them people behind. Amen? And sometimes when God wants us to do something, sometimes we got to leave some people behind. Sometimes not everybody's going to go with you. Amen? But there are times that people need to be right there with you that are supposed to go with you. But there are some that aren't supposed to go and you leave them behind. But because we, we're, we're so caught up in our circle that we don't want to leave people behind. Amen? We don't want to go into uncharted land because I'm comfortable with these eight people around me. You know that my circle is very small. It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and I. That's it. Amen? Because I don't want to be hindered in the things of God. There's other people that should be here with me, but they're not here. Amen? But I don't want to be hindered. I want to do what God has called me to do. Amen? And, and sometimes we get so caught up in our circle that we don't want to do what God wants us to do, what God has called us to do, the will of God, because we're comfortable right here. Amen? But a man after God's heart is somebody that is willing to do everything that God wants them to do, no matter what. It's that simple, church. Amen? It's that simple and that it's hard for us to emulate. Amen? It's hard for some people. David was willing to do whatever God asked him to do. Amen? As we have seen, David had his faults, but God knew his heart. God knew that David loved him and would do whatever he asked him to do. Amen? See, God knows your faults. God knows your imperfections tonight. God knows who you are. God knows your struggles. Amen? God knows. But He doesn't look at that. Amen? And I'm just, I, I, I don't look at the faults and the flaws of an individual. He looks at the heart, the intent of man inside and says, hey, that's him. Just like Paul, amen, Saul of Tarsus, he believed in what he was doing, amen, but he was running around and he was faithful and loyal to what he was doing. Can you imagine God was looking down from heaven and say, that one right there, I want him, the angels of heaven, and said, what do you mean? God said he's loyal to what he believes, amen. He's loyal to it, amen. God didn't look at what he was doing, what he had done. God doesn't look at what you've done. God doesn't look at your past. God doesn't look at your faults. He looks at the intent of your heart. Amen. Are you willing? Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Are you willing? Are you willing? Amen. We should live as holy as a life as we can. And we can carry and we can live a very holy life with the Holy Spirit's help. Amen. See, a lot of times, we try to do it ourselves. We believe in the Holy Spirit. 
But we don't invite the Holy Spirit into our life daily. Amen. When you get into prayer, when I get on my knees in the morning, I welcome God. I welcome the Holy Spirit. I welcome Jesus. Be right here with me throughout this day and right here in my prayers. Amen. Be right here with me, man. Be right here because I need you. I need you more today than yesterday. Amen. So we need the help of the Holy Spirit. If you're walking around and with anger, bitterness, and resentment, and hatred towards something, I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't got the Holy Spirit, and you need to be delivered, amen? You need to be delivered because that's not God. That's not the God that we serve, amen? God has come to remove that, to remove that junk and put, put a newness inside of us. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I, I've come to, to remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh that I could work with. Some of us are still holding on to our stony hearts, the things of the past, the hurts of the past. And we haven't fully surrendered to God. Amen? We should read and meet, read and meditate on God's Word. We should be people of prayer, praying without ceasing. Amen? Yet, if we really if we really want to be men and women after God's own heart, we need to start doing what He asked us to do. Amen? We need to start doing what He asked us to do. It's not easy. It's not always easy. You know? It's not always fun. And it is often without human reward or recognition. Come on, somebody. Some people want the recognition. Some people want the, want the reward. Some people want to be validated. Look at what I did. This is what I did. Amen? This is what I did. I see people post on Facebook and they go feed the homeless and they're clicking a picture with them. How, the Bible says when you give alms to those that are poor, do it in secret. Amen? You know what alms are? When you, you know, nobody preaches about alms, but when you give alms to the poor, do it in secret. It doesn't need to be on Facebook. Amen? That's well, different if you're doing an event and you're promoting an event. Yeah, that's different. Amen? But people that are out there doing it and they want the recognition, they want the likes on Facebook, look at what I'm doing. Amen? But people want a reward. They want to be validated. Look at what I did. Hey, I did this. I did this. I did this. They want to be validated. Amen? But who do we serve? Do we serve man or God? Who do we want to please? Man or God? Who do we want to think highly of us? Man or God? Amen? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Is it for the recognition? For the applause? Amen? God bless you, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I got a pastor friend of mine, uh, Pastor Scott. He's the pastor of CHAM, Community Home Alliance Ministries. And I've known him, gosh, man, I met him in, it's all been almost 20 years I've known him. We used to help him out at his church, you know, teach, preach, whatever. And um, he's on the streets all the time. You probably see him on the news, Pastor Scott Wagers. Shout out to Pastor Scott. But he's out there and he's taking pictures and he's doing what he's doing because he's trying to bring awareness to the homelessness. That's his ministry. When you and I are sitting in an air-conditioned house or an air-conditioned office when it's hot outside, he's out there. He's out there in the homeless encampments bringing water to the homeless people. He's out there bringing food to the homeless people. Amen? And he's not out there to bring recognition or admiration to himself. He's out there to bring awareness of what is going on in the streets of San Jose and how bad it is. Amen? Amen? But some people do it because they want the recognition. Amen? We have to check our hearts. Amen? We have to check the intent of our hearts. Amen? Acts 13, 22 says this. Oh, we just read Acts 13, 22. Amen? Um, 2 Peter 3, 9. And we know the scripture. I share it a lot. The Lord is not slow about His promise as come count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but all to come to repentance. The will of God 
It's for people to get saved. Amen? The will of God is for people to get saved. Amen? And there's people out there today that are preaching another gospel. And it's contrary to the gospel. The gospel hasn't changed, church. The gospel hasn't changed. It's to see the lost come to repentance so that none could perish. Amen? For that all would come to repentance. Amen? I know that we haven't reached all the sinners yet in this world. But the gospel hasn't changed. That's what the word of God is and that's what the will of God is. Amen? Sure, that we would grow into the things of God, that we would become Christ-like, but the bottom line is that we would go out and reach the lost, bring a message of hope. Amen? And that's what 2 Peter talks about. The word perish means this, to devote or give over to eternal misery in hell, to perish, to be lost, ruined, and destroyed. Amen? And destroyed. Amen? That's what the word perish means. To devote or give over to eternal misery and hell. To perish, to be lost, to be ruined, and to be destroyed. Did you know that today there are some Christians that may die today, that have died yesterday, and may not enter the gates of heaven? Amen? Because Matthew 7 tells us that not all those that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but those that do my will. See, we have to be sure that we are doing the will of God, that we are not promoting our own will and using the banner of Jesus Christ to do these things. Amen? That we are doing what God is requiring us to do. Not saying, I'm over here doing this thing and, and I'm doing it for Jesus, but Jesus didn't send you over there to do it. Amen? So the devil comes along and blesses your event. But it had nothing to do with God. Yeah, you were using the name Jesus. You were using the banner of Christ. But it wasn't where God sent you, amen? It wasn't what God asked you to do. That's why you got to have discernment and be mindful of what God is telling you, where God is leading you, where the Holy Spirit is leading you, and not where you're leading yourself, amen? You have to spend time with God and say, God, where do you want me? Where are you taking me, Lord? I'm just running. Not just going, drifting aimlessly and going and trying to do something. Amen? Know that God, amen? That God is leading you and that God is putting you there. When we develop and obtain the heart of God, we can't help but want to tell the world and the people about Jesus. Amen? When we develop and obtain the heart of God, we can't help but want to tell the world and the people about Jesus. Amen. Nothing else should matter. And I'm not saying that you quit your job and you know that no, that's that that would be dumb. But that the will of God is before everything else. Amen. Yeah, you gotta work. You gotta keep a roof over your head, food on your table, money in your pocket, gas in your car. But that, that wouldn't be the object of your affection. Because when we develop and obtain the heart of God, we can't help but want to tell the world and the people about Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. And the word says this. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher. Amen. We are to go to those people. To those people. Amen. We are to go to the people. Because those that are out there, they're not going to make their way into the church. They're not just going to come walking in and say, here we are. 15 new people today, here we are. No. Somebody's got to go tell them. Somebody's got to go tell them about Jesus. Somebody's got to go invite them. Somebody's got to go plant a seed. Somebody's got to go water the seed. We can't sit in the church and wait for them to come in. Amen? We can't. We have to go out. The word says go out to the highways and the byways. Amen? We have to go out. Amen? Leave a Sunday service inside and do it at a park. I mean, why can't we do church at a park today? It's outside. It's open. Amen? 
Bring a chair and just have church at the park. Amen? You have to be ready and willing to do what God wants us to do, and that's reach the lost. Amen? The word preaching in the Greek is pronounced caruso, and it means to publish, to proclaim openly, openly, to proclaim openly something which has been done, used of the public proclamation of the gospel and matters pertaining to it, made by John the Baptist, by Jesus, by the apostles and other Christian teachers. These people proclaim the gospel. They went out and proclaimed. Man, one of these days somebody's going to get this. One of these days, somebody's going to get it and say, man, let's go. Let's go out. Let's go out. Let's go have church in a park. Amen. Are we embarrassed? Are we embarrassed to have church in a park? Let's go have church in a park. Amen. Because you and I know the Word of God says that the Word will not come back void. If we're bringing the Word in a park, people are going to hear. Amen. And that Word is going to fall on some soil. Somebody right at that time, at that moment, may need to hear it. Maybe we not better see the fruit of our, our word labor that day, but we planted a seed or we watered a seed. Amen. Luke chapter 12. And there's going to be some people who say, oh, no, we can't go to a park. Luke 12, 34 says this. Listen to this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Amen. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Amen? Treasure is anything we value above all else and that which motivates us to action. Amen? Let me repeat that. Treasure is anything we value above all else and that which motivates us to action. For some it is money. For others it is power. Still other people strive for fame or attention or positions. There are many things in this world vying for control of our heart. So many distractions today that are trying to control our heart. According to Jesus, determining where our treasure is will also determine where our heart is. Amen. Many people claim to look forward to heaven, but their hearts are really not in it. Amen? Again, Matthew chapter 7, where it says, Not all those that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Their hearts are caught up in the cares of this world, because that's where their treasure lies. Amen? You don't understand. My job wants me for 12 hours. i got to make that money. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right, go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. God be with you. Amen. Go ahead. When we develop and obtain the heart of God, we cannot help but to see people the way Jesus saw them. Amen. Matthew 9.36, familiar scripture. The word says that seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed. And dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Amen. How many of you driving down the road pass somebody up and you can just see the stress in their face? You can see they're defeated. You can see they're beat up spiritually, emotionally. Amen. And you don't do anything about it. If you're not going to stop and talk, at least say a prayer for them. At least say a prayer for them. Amen. But I've seen people, and I'm just going to share really quick because we're going to get to close in a minute. There was a gentleman on 10th in Santa Clara. I was going to a job interview. This was years ago, job interview. And um, I was going, I was crossing over Santa Clara, going south down 10th Street. And there was this gentleman on the corner. And he was with his grocery cart. And as I was passing by, he went to sit down. To sit down. And the Holy Spirit told me to go talk to him. I got a job interview, man. So I drove past the first street. And I heard it again. The Holy Spirit told me to go talk to him. So I went around the block and I came back. I went down on one of those streets by San Jose State. And I came back down 9th. And I came back on 10th Street and I parked. And I got off and I talked to this man. 
And I began to talk to him about his life, just share with him and just tell him that the Holy Spirit told me to come and talk to him. He was a, a backslider, older gentleman, a backslider from, uh, I don't remember what state, in um, Arkansas, somewhere out there. He left his family. He lost his job and he couldn't provide. He left, jumped on a train, ended up in California, was out here for 10, 12 years, I think it was back then. And I gave him money, told him I'll come back and see him. And for a few weeks, I kept coming by every few days and I would talk to him. And um, he, uh, he hadn't talked to his family in a long time. And I, I don't know how, but he got his number. He got, one, he got one of his son's number. He got a number for his son. I think he had contact with some other family member, but not his immediate family, not his wife, and not his kids. And we called him. We sat on the curb on 10th and Santa Clara, and we called him. And he talked to his son, and, and he began to cry. His son began to cry, and after they were done, I got on the phone and just told him who I was and that I had stopped. The Lord had led me, and he says, man, we've been praying that we would hear from you. So a week went by. I didn't see him. Another week went by, and I didn't see him. I finally stopped, and I asked this, uh, this other guy that was always out there as well, what happened to him? And he said that his son had came for him. His son came and got him. Amen. But when I was driving by, I seen this individual so distressed, man, and so just like, so lost, you know. And you and I, and I know, I know that you, you drive down the road and you see people like that. And maybe the Holy Spirit tells you to stop and talk to them as well, and you don't. You just keep going. Amen. When you develop the heart of God, you can't help but see those people the way Jesus did right here in 936. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Amen. When we develop and obtain the heart of God, we can't help but want to see people the way Jesus sees them and not want to reach them the way Jesus reached them. Matthew 28, verse 16, and we're going to close. There are a million passages of scriptures and we know what it is, the Great Commission. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain with Jesus had designated. Amen. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen. When we develop and obtain the heart of God, we can't help but wanting to do the will of God. Wanting to do what God has called us and commissioned us to do. And I've shared this before. Many people say, you know what, Pastor John, I'm not called to do that. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're not called to do it. You're commanded to do it. You're commissioned to do it. Amen. It's part of the commission in our walk with Christ. Amen. When we obtain the heart of God, then we will not have a problem doing what he has commissioned us to do. David was a man after God's heart, not because he was perfect, not because he was holy, because he was willing to do what God had called him to do, what God had asked him to do, what God had commissioned him to do. Are you? Are you? Amen. Are you willing to do that today? Are we willing to be men and women after God's own heart? There is a price to pay, but heavenly rewards to gain, my brothers and sisters. Oh, listen, how long, how I long to hear him say that I am a man after his own heart. I pray that you would want that title as well. That God would look down and say, that sister, that daughter of mine, she's a woman after my own heart. That that son of mine, that, yeah, that one right there, I don't care. I don't care about how bad he is. I don't care about his faults and flaws, but I care about that, 
He's a man after my own heart. Amen. Are you willing to be a man and a woman after God's own heart today? There's a price to pay, but heavenly rewards to gain. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. I pray that you receive this message. Because I hear people today saying that we are living in the last times. In the last days. That we are living out the book of Revelation right before us right now. And my response is, if you know that, what are you doing about it? Posting it on Facebook? But are you, are you outside trying to do something about it? Are you trying outside trying to tell the lost about Jesus Christ? Man, I'm going to be challenging some people pretty soon. And hey, you know what? You want to post this all on Facebook? Well, let's gather and let's do something about it. Let's go out to those streets and tell people about Jesus. Amen? We ain't got to get radical. Amen? You just got to be willing to say, yes, Lord. Send me. Here I am, God. Here I am. Amen? We don't have a problem posting other things. We don't have a problem posting this and posting that. But can we say, we're going to go out to the streets and I'm going to post about us showing and telling people about the love of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you tonight as we thank you, God. Thank you for your word, Father God, for speaking to us, Father God. I pray that the hearts received, Lord, that the word went forth and fell on good soil, Father God. Lord, I pray that we would be people that would be after your heart, God. Despite our imperfections, our faults, our flaws, our insecurities, God, whatever it is, Lord, that we would be people that are after your heart, ready and willing, God, to go where you want us to go. Even if it's foreign land, Lord, that we would go, God. Maybe if, even if it's outside of our comfort zone, God, that we would step out and go, God. We thank you this evening, Lord. We love you, God. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a good night.